Reverend Emmanuel Opara is a seasoned preacher of God's Word with the tangible presence of God in attendance. He has spent decades mentoring and teaching extensively on prayer and the ministry of the Holy Ghost. With his infectious persona, he has an endless list of protégés whom he has influenced by not only teaching them God's Word but laboring in prayer over them. Reverend Emmanuel and his amiable wife, Pastor Ifejola Opara, are the lead pastors of the Fort Church, located in the city of Abuja, with its life-transforming services holding on Sundays and Thursdays at the Sharon Ultimate Hotels. He is the visionary of the core ministry, an acronym for Christ Overflowing Life Revealed Everywhere. He holds prayer cruises, life-changing meetings where countless hours are spent waiting upon and ministering to God in prayer with the attendant manifestation of the Holy Spirit. He also holds the Glory Is Here outreaches all over the nation and abroad in churches, fellowships, schools and institutions of higher learning. Emmanuel Opera, aside from being a powerful minister of the gospel, is also a civil engineering graduate. He lives in Abuja, Nigeria with his beautiful wife, Ifejola, and their lovely daughters, Pearl, Nadia, Reina, and Emanuela. Ladies and gentlemen, with Jesus' joy in our hearts, let us make welcome Reverend Emmanuel Opara. Amen. Lift your hands and just bless God. Just give him praise. Just worship him. Go ahead, worship him. Worship him. Can you just play softly on that keyboard? Just play. Go ahead, worship him. Thank you, precious, precious Heavenly Father. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, your name is to be hallowed. Hey, 
Lord, we give you praise. We worship you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Our help you are. We welcome you, Holy Ghost. We welcome you, sweet Spirit of the living God. Have your way here. Help us receive from the Father. Our helper, you are. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit, for receptive hearts. Thank you for hearing ears. Thank you for seeing eyes. Lord, we receive, Lord, the quickening of your spirit here. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so honored to be here today, amen. I know sin sincerely again, I appreciate God for Reverend Dunka and his lovely wife, Mamieli. My wife sends her greetings. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Turn to Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Amen. Amen. Men ought always to pray, not to faint. He spake a parable unto them that as long as you are a man, you will always have need to always pray and not to faint. Invariably, if you are not fainting, you are praying. And if you're fainting, you're not praying always. People who throw in the towel give up easily are people who don't understand this scripture. Men ought always to pray. Not lose heart, not cave in. Not give up. Men ought always to pray. And not to faint. Now, There's something I want to just share with us today that is in my spirit. And that's an aspect of prayer that um, sometimes we, we miss. It is that prayer is not primarily about receiving, I mean, talking to God and he answers you. If it's all about that, this phrase about men ought always to pray will not be there. There is an aspect of prayer it's a very strong aspect where we reach out to God. He answers us. That prayer is based on the answers we receive from God. But the dimension of prayer I want to explain to us is where you make currency, spiritual energy available that you can spend in prayer. That aspect of prayer, and truly, everybody here, whatever money you're able to hold is a spiritual energy you're able to put together. You can't hold more than the energy you can hold. Life is powered by spiritual energy. If you steal it, it will still shrink you back to your level. If you try to hold it, it will kill you. Money is spirit. That's why it says you can't serve God and mammon. It's spirit. What you have as pepper is just point of contact. Money is essentially spirit. That's why few people have it. Especially in church. Life is powered by energy. So when you see Jesus come out of the baptism, the Spirit of the Lord descended upon him, the heavens opened, and a voice from heaven spoke, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. My beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And the Bible says, And the Spirit of the Lord drove him into the wilderness. Guess what? God's beloved. One whom he hears and commands men to hear. So he goes to the wilderness and spends 40 days and 40 nights with wild beasts. 
What will the word of God made flesh be spending 40 days and 40 nights doing? Is it all about God hearing him? If it's about God hearing you, you don't need more than five minutes to pray because in five minutes, you can compress the most strongest prayer point together in construction. Prayer is not about God hearing you alone. It has that part. But the major part of prayer is making spiritual energy that you can spend. Because when Jesus returned from that wilderness after 40 days, the Bible said he returned in the power of the Holy Ghost. Meaning he returned with currency to spend. Then he appeared in the temple, opened the book and read and told them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. It, I've realized that it's the energy you have made available that you're going to spend. It does not matter. And you know, life first is governed by laws. Universal laws. These laws have no respect for emotion. That you squeeze your face does not change God. God is constant. If I jump a hundred times, I'm going to come here. Because gravity is a constant. That's how laws are. And the day you understand that laws govern the universe and begin to put the laws together to enhance your life and, and decide the quality of life you live, the better for you. Jesus was on earth without electricity. God did not say, this is my son. Electricity show until a man found the laws that brought electricity. God did not change it because his son was on earth. That's how God does not move by emotion or sentiment by the laws that govern the universe. If you have it, you spend it. If you don't have it, then you're actually bankrupt. You're bankrupt. So the protracted time we pray is in making energy available. The Bible described that in James chapter 5, 16b. It says, Elijah was a man of like passion as we are, that there should be no rain, and there was no rain upon the face of the earth for a space of three and a half years. And then he prayed earnestly again, and there was rain. Why? Because the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man, what it does, it makes tremendous power available, dynamic in this working. Meaning once this currency is available, you can spend. And the primary way we make this energy available is spending protracted time praying. Oh, you will see testimonies that you didn't plan for. Because this currency, you know, two years ago, I was in Port Harcourt for a meeting. And then I'm, I called the pastor, a salvation ministry pastor. I said, you should come, let's go and eat. He said, he doesn't want to eat. Ah, this pastor likes food. <laughs> so when he says he's not going to eat, I knew there was a problem. Because the only way I need, no, I can see him is to tell him, let's go to Jevnik and eat. He said, we will not eat. So I said, are you okay? He said, it's okay, but that you are fasting. I said, oh, a papa said they should fast. Then some set of pastors among them. So I said, no problem. I'll be back in two months' time, so I'll see you. He said, even in two months, I will not eat. <laughs> I said, what's the problem? He said, papa said, we're fasting for two years. <laughs> two years. <laughs> Malakutaya Made Gudu Gudagaya. If you see the way he was talking, you know that he was he was Papa Zewish. So they did that fast. I know all of them follow Bishop like a hawk. You remember the story you told me when they started Otter. By publicity, you thought that all that CNN, everything that was done, the church would be full, is it not? Yes, but for two years, the church was less than a quarter full. Yes, Otter was less than a quarter full, running for two years. Bishop knew if they continued this way, the heart of the, even the quarter full would be discouraged. Bishop started an all night every day for two years, wearing his short knicker with elements of the communion going everywhere chanting and calling people. He said, fast forward. They run a false service. Sometimes people outside are more than the people inside. 
I have a senior friend who, you know, who went, okay, you know the story. He was telling me some things. He was in Bishop's house. He's, you know, he says, nah, that man abuse the madu. That means, nah, that man will be person again. <laughs> Bishop took him in. For that amount of day, we were talking to him every day. He was sharing his note with him. They are building the ark. The roof of the ark is 40 million US dollars. Roof. And he told people not to give. Yes, the money is there. Even though he announced they should not give, one man didn't hear and sent a million dollars. <laughs> Roof, 40 million USD. <laughs> I know some uninformed person will go on Facebook. All these pastors, what they do is collect title and offering. Go and be a pastor. <laughs> oh, Leku Shapaya. <laughs> go and be a pastor. So, they saw that with Bishop. Because after that whole exercise, everywhere filled up. So when Polynesia was going to start the dome, before they started, he took a one year fast. He didn't want to start church and it was a quarter full. <laughs> then after they started, he took another one year fast. Do you understand? Then the BMA is about to open his own mega city. So he doesn't also want to wait and he said as he was praying, after some time, the building that they've not entered became too small in his spirit. He said, realize that what is in his spirit, the building can't take. They've not entered. And while they were there, I don't know how many of you hear those miraculous testimony last December. A church in America started in 1920-something. You know, with a large, massive expanse of land. In fact, the, the insurance on the property was $7 million U.S. dollar. Decided they wanted to hand over the property to a church that will, uh, to a ministry that will glorify God. They went to uh, Billy Graham's ministry and handed it over. Billy Graham's ministry said, We know a ministry that will do that. They came to Nigeria, 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 Nigeria. Nigeria. Then not Nigeria, South South. Not, not just, <laughs> I don't know whether you understand. The red flag is redder there. He can tell you, the red there, everywhere is red. And they found that. That that's the church they should give the entire property to at a token of ten dollars. <laughs> you know, the ten dollars is just a token. Let there be let there be something that that exchanged. I know some of you you quickly say, let wow. this be, like this in me, oh Lord. <laughs> I am telling you that life is powered by spiritual energy. You see, all those times we pray, that it look like nothing is happening. <laughs> Apostle Selma was with me, so he was telling us a story. He said when he wanted to come to Abuja, Abuja also scared him. That he was negotiating with God not to come to Abuja. But the year he finally decided to come, in considered with the COVID year. So he came and took Abuja's map and settled with it from morning to night for six months. By the sixth month, Abuja became small. When he came into Abuja, in less than six months, somebody gave him three billion naira to buy land so they can build. His currency It's not because of what he's pre preaching. Sometimes you want to copy the way he preaches. Listen to me. When Jesus says, he spake this parable unto them to this end, that men ought always Always to pray and not to lose heart, not to faint, not to give in, not to cave in. It is this energy upon everything you do that really make it count. It is it. It is it. We started praying. I began to stretch here and there by God's instruction to us to do. What I'm focusing is different, but what is happening is different. When you have this currency, eh, you will spend. <laughs> you just, things you didn't plan will come to you. Yesterday, they gave us a 1.5 hectare of land that the minister approved for us. Because somebody who is building the estate insisted that since there is going to be mugs, there is going to be a church. And he thought of a church, he thought of me. 
I know you can explain somehow I know the guy. I actually know the guy. Somehow I know the guy. So there are plenty of people you know. There are plenty of people you know. There are plenty of people you know. You see the energy. You know, one day, Apostle Buffett walked up to me. I didn't invite him. He just came to Abuja and said, Kai, I pray for six months. I will father you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, sir. You know, he began to tell me something. When Pastor Chris moved to Lagos, Pastor Chris was staying with him. He said, when Pastor Chris was staying with him, he didn't really agree with Pastor Chris. Pastor Chris would lock himself inside that room. Be praying morning and night. Once in a while, I would tell him, young, he needs to go as a young man and mix with people. All he was doing was praying. <laughs> if he comes out there, he's going to preach. If he's not preaching, it's except the day he's going for evangelism. That's the triangular life he was living. He said, suddenly... Suddenly. 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 So right now, God has spoken to him about prayer. He has stretched it. He has gone to MFM. That's why if you see the way we were clapping, if you remember. <laughs> he says he watched this man. He was wondering why you should spend because for him then, you know it, Bafina. Everything can be done by seed. My daughter is sick. I bring seed. You say, money, you have anything. Your money is kana. But when it passes through God, it is mighty. The weapons of our warfare. <laughs> but when it passes through God, they are mighty. What I'm telling you story is that that is visit to me. That is visit. That visit, that visit was energy that brought it because it changed everything about our finances. Everything. Everything. There's something that man comes with. And he told me, even though he has made, he told me some things, but you know, I want to grow small, small, amen. <laughs> I want to grow small. He said, if, I, if he finishes with me this year, if I pass less than 5,000, then it's not the anointing upon his head. I've done this for 36 years. I'm coming to do a 16 days meeting for you. I said, no, sir. <laughs> 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 to jump from where I am to 5,000, I'm not ready. I know I'm not ready. I know what I need for the end of the year. You know, there's some growth, you, you forget yourself. No, I know some growth, people lose themselves in the growth. Yeah. You just, <laughs> you don't even know yourself again. <laughs> I say, I'm not ready, sir. When you make tremendous power available, it's currency. It's currency. It is this dimension of prayer that especially most of us in the world of faith circle we miss and our message is despised by people. The right message. Yeah. But you see, what finances the message is a spiritual energy. It's the energy of the spirit. And this energy of the spirit is not God who said, okay, today I need this to come upon you. You make it available. You make it available. Dunsin lost the wife, went to Dunamis, and they subjected him to one year fast. That is sheep. It's not the way the mother gave birth to him. <laughs> Are you following? <laughs> then suddenly he's on every platform. Every. His voice is not the best. <laughs> every platform. It's the same story that Nathan Nebasi told. His own, he was even fasting for two years. His sister who led him to Christ called him and told him, I am the one who led you to Christ. <laughs> this one you are doing is not, is not part of the package I delivered. It's one of the days as he was praying, a cloak covered him. 
after that cloak, he felt a warm embrace. After that, the rest is history. And this earnest heartfelt continued prayer. Let me tell you where people are. It's the same thing. Persistent consistency. Is that people stop too soon. In fact, maybe the first time you tried, it looked like everything was even going contrary to your prayer. Is that not? And then you pull off and you want some other... <laughs> I hear some people say some things about having prayer. It's the same thing with everything you do. Speaking God's word or giving. The day you were going to establish yourself in divine health, for instance... I don't know whether your story was like mine. The day the light came upon you, there was a knock from Satan contending for those words. But you know those who won? Are those who defiled their feelings, stood by those words, kept speaking those words, and they came out on the other end. When we started church, I was praying and trusting God and telling him about our finances. One of the things God told me was certain ministries to give money consistently to. So I was giving, and sometime early last year, he told me to up all my game. So I gave one million to one, I gave 500 to one. I was doing that every month. I was giving one million to Bishop Veriko, 500. I was just giving someone. January, February, March. And Reverend Tende was, you know, sometimes you just have a picture that gives you hope. I remember Reverend Tende says he was giving his salary five more, it looked like he was going to die. <laughs> That's where I was. Yeah. The more I gave, it looked like what came in at the end of the month was not close to what I gave, but it was an instruction from the Lord. So after the fifth month, I went to God. I took out time to fast and pray, and I told God, I was asking him, you know what he told me? Be patient. Wow. 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 Be patient. Told me to be patient to a particular month. So it was consoling. I just continued and kept at it. I will never forget. At the end of the month, God told me to be patient. Something broke. The first thing I saw was that about six young men, differently, not I mean, unconnected, called and told me that God told them to send their first one million naira to me. Then a man walked into my office again and told me that he did a job, but as he was going, God told him to give me ten million out of it. From then, I just opened to something. But you know, I've done this thing consistently. This is the second year. Consistently. But the more I did it, it didn't look. So I was telling the people in the car today, all you need to know is whether the road you're following is the right way. Hallelujah. Like we took off from, um, from Abuja coming here. All I want to know, are we on the right way? No problem. We, you know, we kept driving today. We entered Pothole. We kept going. But if we are on the right path, just be patient. The car is going to get to just. It's going to get to just. So the first thing is that you make tremendous power, energy, spiritual energy available that is dynamic in his working. The second thing those protracted prayers does is that, you know, this is one side anyway. In dealing with third party, third party influence, in dealing with people, in dealing with people, um, let, me, let me say something first. The Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4 refers to Satan as the God of the system. Are you following? The God of the system. And the majority of the system are unbelievers. And in, in Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 23, the Bible says, the life of, can, can we look Jeremiah, look Jeremiah 10, 23. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, I know that the way of a man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his path. So it means that even you today, who always think you know what you're doing, you really don't know what you're doing. I know that the way of a man is not in himself. It is not in a man that walketh to direct his path. At every point in your life, you're under one influence or the other. And guess what? Unregenerate, Christian, unregenerate men and carnal Christians are tended to yield to demons more than God. And guess what? You're going to cut through them. If you don't prepare for them, they will frustrate your life on it. Are you found out that you have finished everything about the deal? Everything is set. Just the last moment. It's just the last thing to do and we cash in. And then the man just... Hmm. 
We'll see next week. Somebody has visited. Somebody that is helpless under has visited. If you don't know how to provide the influence, the environment, the atmosphere to decide what influence they come under, you walk through life frustrated by men. Frustrated by men. So in those prayers, we make the dynamic energies available that creates the right influence on people. And then those protracted prayers also bring you to a place of great sensitivity. If you know that this world is saturated by demonic forces, then your sensitivity should be different. Long ago, I was listening to Pastor Chris who was talking about winning, winning the invisible war and all that. When he first said some of those things, I really did not, until I began to look at it more carefully and more critically. Number one, the day you were born, God assigned angel to you. Angels to you. But just as he did so, Satan also assigned demons to you. Stunted growth. Unfinished product. Limitations in the things people do. Are influenced by those demonic forces that are attached to people. It is sensitivity that makes you know when to deal with what. Kenegin said when Jesus appeared to him teaching him about demon and demon possession why Jesus was yet speaking in the presence of Jesus yeah. some demonic interface creatures came they were making some very funny noise and as they were making those funny noise Jesus kept talking and he was wondering why Jesus did not stop talking but Jesus eventually he just out of frustration commanded those rubbish to then he went down then he interrupted Jesus and told Jesus, didn't you see that I wasn't hearing what you were saying? Jesus said, I saw, but if you did nothing about it, I could not have been able to, I could not have done anything. He, couldn't, he said, Jesus probably meant I will not, not I could not. Jesus says, I could not. I could not. So I had an interesting experience. We started church. When we started church, by our first anniversary, we were honored by Reverend Joshua Tende. By our first anniversary, after our first anniversary, we began to run two services. That's how much we, we were growing. After the first anniversary, I think about a few months after it, I realized that not only were, were, were not growing as we were, even though we were putting everything that we were doing okay. So I just thought, maybe it's that stage where maybe you need all those planning and all that. Even though we were, we were putting structures and planning and doing trainings, a train. We're doing all kinds of training. You were helping us with resource persons. <laughs> we're doing all kinds of training, putting places and things in place to take in the growth that I believe God has for us and all that. But you just, apart from that, I just saw there were some little bickerings and strife in the air. And I began to, you know, it, it's, it's, I caught myself. I said, no, something is wrong here. I took out some time to fast and pray. On the fifth to sixth day of my fast, I had a vision. In that vision, I saw we have some b-boys in town. I saw one of the locations, somebody stood there and was making incantation. When I got up, I just had an idea what that was. So I took a drive. I drove to the place where that was. But I, did, I just began to speak to those b-board, began to using them first as a point of contact. There's a one by AYA, if you're entering the city from that highway axis. When I came there, guess what I saw? I saw a blood splash on it. The, you, see, you see those thick, as if some flesh hung with the blood on the b-board. The first question I asked, what did I do anybody? <laughs> but you see, in this life, you don't have to do anybody anything. <laughs> oh, and I said, oh, this is where this rubbish is coming from. About this time, listen, about this time, two, two, no, th there were even three. Three of the people who were my key leaders, one of them came to me and said, he sensed that God is telling him it is time to leave. Another person came and told me that, you know, and all that before this incident happened. And the way I have set myself that, me, I don't want a headache. You want to leave, I will help you leave. You know, I, before I started church, I do not want to carry this strife. 
I'm not going to be a strife. I'm going to help you. I'm going to do send forth for you. I'd plan how I'll send him forth. I'd actually plan how. I've planned how to settle him very well so that he'll be happy where he's going. Then I got to praying and dealing with this rubbish. I just knew what it was. I dealt with it. Guess what? The guy told me that he didn't know what was happening to him. He's still in church. That he didn't know what was happening to him. And the Lord told me. You see what you saw? It's why a lot of churches are grounded and plateaued. You remember Bishop Wedeku said the same thing. The church came and stayed in one place. They were just growing, doing everything was there. Until he took out time to fast and pray. On the third day of the fast, God told him to walk out of the church. He walked out. God told him to turn. He turned. He looked and he saw a black, a black, a black covering over the entire church. God told him to point to it and command it to be rolled away. Like a garment, he rolled and went away. Guess what? After that happened, bam! Church began to increase. Guess what? One of the people who got into church was just a close by neighbor. Close by neighbor. When they finally asked him, why, why, why haven't you come to church since? He said, I thought you guys were white coming to church. <laughs> when I saw you, can you see what was happening? That, I mean, you're speaking in tongues. They still see you white coming. <laughs> the discernment. There are threshold where you're able to catch these things and deal with them and cross. So that those protracted praying is not just, oh Lord, answer me. Oh Lord, answer me. You do not need more than five minutes for God to answer you. The Bible says Jesus spent 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness with wild beasts. Son of the most high God. The word of God made flesh. If anybody needed to navigate this life without those kind of praying, it would be Jesus. But everything Jesus did before Gethsemane was example. He came to show us how man anointed by God can navigate this earth and be victorious. Every of those things he did. So those periods he spent and if you see subsequently different times you see him praying making those energy available you know, even about the spoken word. That's another thing with prophetic words and words that are spoken. The reason why words don't come to pass sometimes is because it's not that anything is wrong with the word that was spoken. But people did not know that those, were, those words are supposed to be saturated with God's energy. God's power so that they amount to something. You look at even Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, before 23. If you start from verse 12. Jesus came to a fig tree and said to the fig tree, no man, answer the future, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Is that not? When he said that, the Bible says he left there. When he left there, you know where he went to? He went to the temple and he found money changers selling doves and all that. He took whip and began to whip them and upturned the table and drove them out and preached a message. What was the message? It's my house not supposed to be called the house of prayer of all nations that you have turned to a den of thieves. So watch, watch this. Jesus just caused the fig tree. The next place he was looking to go was where he could find where to pray. It is like, let me tell you what it is like. It is like Elijah say, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Ahab, I mean, yes, Ahab goes, is it Ahab? Ahab goes to eat and drink, but himself put his head between his knee. Otherwise, it would have been on record that prophet Elijah told us that there will be rain and we waited for rain. When you hear the sound of the abundance of rain, that's when to put your head between your knees and throw that rain. And bring it. Otherwise, Jesus would have been shocked. But of course he knew. In Matthew 24, when the Bible says he came, he sent his disciples across to go to the other side. But himself, he stayed back. And he began to pray. Then the evening came. He kept praying till the fourth watch of the night. Then by the fourth watch of the night, when he had finished praying, he got up and made to meet his disciples, came to the river, there was no boat. He stepped on the water and began to walk on water. Then after walking on water, he met them. 
And that storm that has hindered them, because the Bible says the wind was contrary, so they were, they were still there for that amount of time. If you calculate roughly, Jesus spent about nine hours praying. Roughly, I've made a rough. When I mean nine hours, is the minimum he would have prayed on that mountain. He was praying that length of time, came to meet his disciples, and when he met them, what kept them? That river also, you're not supposed to spend maximum, depending on the kind of boat they use, they should have spent like one hour crossing over. But journey that was meant for one hour, for nine hours, they were still in the middle of the water, not making progress. And let me also announce, those contradictory winds come to life. They come to everybody. It is called winds that are meant to resist progress. They come to everybody. Those wind will blow at a certain point of your life. And this wind, listen, no empirical law solves it. Nothing you know mentally can solve it. The only way they can be dealt with is spiritual. And that's what Jesus picked and knew that if he was in this boat with them, if he was in this boat with them, Jesus would have been embarrassed. I know your mind can't think of Jesus. That's why he prayed. That's why he prayed the way he prayed. He came, he spoke to the wind and they were quiet. They entered the boat and were on the other side. Then they met the madman across there. Why was Jesus spending time praying? He would have just come to the wind and says, peace be still. If he could have done that and then led us the other way around, he deceived us. You know what I mean? If I have to come and pray, 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 to come and say, peace be still, and I also tell you that you can also just do that without praying. So why did you pray? Yeah. Yeah. Since you were setting an example for us. Yeah. So those amount of time he spent praying was making those requisite energy to rest upon what he is doing. Upon what he is doing. Everything now becomes potent. What a dear sister who in any case, we started praying a long stretch prayer. So she comes all the way from Lafia. She comes to stay with her daughter. She'll spend like two, three weeks. Then she'll go back to where she's staying in Lafia. And this is her story. She's been married for 30-something years, about 37 years. But for 27 of the 30-something years, herself and the husband have not seen eye to eye. The husband is in, is in one battle or the other with every child in the house for 27 years. 27. The woman's last born is one of my keyboardists. I've tried to make this boy go home. He doesn't go home. Tell me you don't know my dad. 27 years. The two older sons are pastors. 27 years. Guess what happened last week? She said as she was praying, she felt an urge to go back to that house. Now she has separated from the husband. Though they are not divorced, they just don't live together again. Because living together is hell. She went there, and as she was praying in the house, she sends an urge with us two. Because she told her two sons, let them go and pray. They went to a room in that room to pray. So you know what came out? A python. The only way I can describe the python when they showed the picture is what you see in Nat Joe Wild. Fat and big and tall. And the python stayed till they killed it. The moment they killed the python, the father calls them. Guess what? She's been trying to travel because she has um, a relative abroad who has been wanting her to travel for the past 18 years. Last week. You know when this miracle happened? They gave her a visa. She traveled on Monday. We prayed for her on Friday. She took the last flight. What I mean Monday? Yesterday. Yes, sir. Listen, 27 years. 27. Was it that God loves them any more now than then? The only way I can describe the snake is what you see in that Joe Wild. You can't believe this was in a person's house. And they didn't see it.
you make those energies available, it will look like God is mighty on your behalf. When they arrested Peter, it looked like God is almighty. When they arrested James, it looked like God was weak. The difference between the two of them was not who was loved or who was not loved. For Peter, something was done about Peter that was not, about, not done about James. The Bible said prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God. For him, two weeks ago, I have a brother who works in, the, in Central Bank. He's like a mid-management staff in Central Bank. He, he's building somewhere in, um, what was that estate in Lube? Where Lume is staying? Oh, okay. And I said to Lube, <laughs> he's building there. So he has a project going. So what he did to make labor cheap, he brought in people from outside town. So this particular brother he brought from Boko, they brought him from Boko to to work. So he was he's work he works there and stays with somebody, you know, and all that. You know what happened? Now on Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday, I can't remember. I think it's Tuesday or Wednesday. The boy didn't come to go back home. So he said, T-boy thought, you know, maybe he played that night. He just did not return home. He didn't see him on Tuesday at work. And the next day at work, maybe that's Wednesday, Thursday now. He didn't see him on Thursday. Then on Friday, he decided to take out time from office to go to site and see was happening. When he came to site, the boy was not there. He said when he stepped into the site, a strong urge to pray hit him. And you know, we've been praying for a long time, so it was easy for him to just catch in on it. He said, he said, I began to pray like a madman. He began to pray like a madman. He spent about 30 minutes on site, then left, went to his house and began to pray and scream and pray and scream. Then towards evening, that whole thing lifted so he sent the boy who helped him get the boy from, from Boko to his parents to tell the parents that they've not seen this boy for so and so time. So he went that Friday. Saturday he got a call from the guy he sent that the guy he just called. What happened? He said they should first send him transport that he's somewhere in Jalingo. They should send him transport so that he can come. So they sent him transport and this is his story. Um, I'm trying to remember this estate. Oh, River Park. I just remember River Park. The project is in River Park. He stays in the main Lube. So it's just two drops from where two drops from where he took um, what you, uh, along. So he entered along just two two stops. You'll be where he was going. All he knew was that he said they should stop him. The guy told him keep quiet. As he tried to talk. He, doesn't, he didn't know what they did to him. All he knew that the next time he woke up, he was in Jalingo. He was in a place in Jalingo that is a slaughterhouse. He saw how they were dismembering people. They were killing people one after the other. So finally, it was his turn on Friday. This Friday that he had an urge to pray. So they took him. And the ritualist comes with his face covered with something. They put his head on, um, on the slab. So the man makes incantation. And there was, quite, quite, there was silence for some time. Then he repeated the incantation. The second time there was silence. He repeated the incantation three times. There was silence. He turned to the man and said, give this man everything and take him as far as possible from here. That's how they took him and dropped him somewhere he was able to wiggle himself to a road and found out where he was was jalingo that's when he was able to get somebody to charge his by now his phone was dead he called home and then they sent transport that's how he came to abuja pastor is it because he prayed that he was delivered oh 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 I don't want to tell you stories where people did not pray about this, but including myself, including myself. That's how I lost my immediate younger sister. I had an urge to pray like that, to take out time to pray. And I was in a, I was in a party that was nice. 
the deputy governor was there, and the deputy governor was just gisting with me. One other man was talking to me, and the urge was there. That protracted praying was not, oh Lord, kill the snake, or oh Lord, stop them from killing him. Is that when you provide this energy, when you have this energy, you give God a greater radius of gyration. His angels are able to walk. Because Philipp, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 says, God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is at work in you. That means it is to, it is to the measure of the power that is operative in you that the measure of God's exceeding abundance is made manifest. So you will see in somebody's life, the exceeding abundant measure is like this. And in some it's like this. It is the energy they've generated. It's the energy they've generated. So the Bible says, man ought always to pray and not offend. Not to give up. And this energy is why money comes to you. That's why currencies come to you. You know, some time ago, somebody promised he would buy us a land. We had gone to look at the land and all that. Then he was stalling. As he was stalling, you know, you know God uses some people to, to start something in your life. So, not far from there, they showed me another land, 8,500 square meter. So, I was driving out. As I was driving out, and I met a man whom I know who. He said, ah, Pastor, I can see you're doing great work. I'm seeing you everywhere. I said, God is faithful. I won't use my mouth to say I'm not everywhere now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say so. <laughs> I'll add to his feet. His confession is helping me. But you know, ironically, he said, what did you come to do here? And I showed him the land. This is the land where... He said, how much is the land? I told him how much the land is. He said, oh, okay, okay, okay. It's long. I, let me do something for you. He gives me 50 million naira for advance payment. The land is about 200 million. Wow. So I called the man and sent it to him. Then he calls another time and says, Pastor, even after I left you, I've not been comfortable. Let me, let me complete. <laughs> let me complete. Let me complete. But, but let me tell you what the man did. It's not just that we got that land. He got another 3,000 square, 3,500 square meter in Wye for us. Because he heard we do prayer and we do church. He said, you do one with church, then you do one. So what we have left is close to his, his house in... Are you following? But I'm, I know you might say, no, God will meet, me, meet my classmate. People I know like that. They will also help me. The energy, this currency, I don't know how to describe it. I realize that life is powered by it. Oh, you were in this meeting when um, Maduka, the Koscharis man, he was even by the. You know, I was, you know, we we're all in the I, was, I didn't come for your session because I had to travel. But you see, that is session. I've listened to it like. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've listened to that session. And particularly that period, he was talking about his devotion. He was supposed to, by the way, because he was teaching on integrity in marketplace. The real trust was integrity in marketplace. That's the owner of course, Charis. Then he now began to answer some question. His question and answer is just by the way. So the way he said it is like by the way. You know, when I brought his boy, one of his boys that came with him, those billionaire boys he brought, George, George Omoraro. Jomoraru is big, when I mean big. When I brought George to, to, to do some series of trainings for me, so George was you know, explaining to us, explaining to young guys, inspiring them. Then he was just talking about um, certain principles that people miss culturally speaking. So he was describing how, you know, maybe you are doing things with Yoruba, man. You don't know that you have to borrow sense to be respectful. I don't even understand. He adds to you. So he described one scenario where he has mentors, mentors, you know, and then he met one of his mentors at the airport. I mean, for, he has boys following him, traveling that day to the They were all traveling together. 
I mean, he has boys who are holding his own. That's judges. Judge just turned 30 last year, but his net worth is about five point something billion now. So he said, as he was as he was waiting to catch his flight, he saw his mentor. He went prostrate at the airport. Prostrate. As he went prostrate, everybody was turning to look at this mentor, who the person should be, because this guy, they saw the guy he came with. So the mentor felt very happy. I said, get up, get up, get up, get up. And by the next they called him and said, okay, you are in town. Come, let's, let us see. And when they talked, he now dropped two billion in his account to do, to do business by Dobale. Of course, Dobale is point of contact for something. But you know what he said? He said, this, this particular year, this thing happened. Because this mentor, both of them had quarreled though. They quarreled to a point where they were both angry sitting together. He, could, he wrote, I don't want you to be my mentor. The mentor also wrote, I don't want to be your mentor. <laughs> <laughs> That's how both of them quarreled. But he said he realized that when he did that, he was not wise. Guess what he did? He said the next year, he did, you know the way Maduka spoke about that? He said the next year when I just woke up, I realized I just needed to, I was looking for something. So I took the first four months fasting and praying. I was reporting in my office like um, 5 a.m. You know, that by the way, I was just crying for the mercy of God for four months fasting and praying. That's the way he just said it. <laughs> After this, he, met, he missed the man at the airport. He prostrates. The man pulls out two billion and gives him three number. And say, I know you don't want me to mentor you, but this three number, call them. Make money from them. Tell them I sent you. And these three men changed his fortune. So, I remember the story I was telling about Maduka. Maduka did not finish primary school. The owner of course, Charis. He said from ages 17, 18, that he gave his life to Christ. He has begun fasting 21 days, three times in a year, and 40 days once in a year. He has not stopped till he became 60. Then he tells some amazing stories in that meeting. <laughs> right now, as we speak, six major bank in Nigeria gives him any money he wants without paperwork. All he needs to say is, I want money. They call him Mr. Integrity. Because in one of those prayers, he was praying and telling God, let there be no business my heart reaches out for. I don't have money to carry out. Including standard chattered. He said when he turned city, he decided to adjust his prayer so he can have time for family. Yeah. <laughs> Guess the adjustment. He eats his last meal on Sunday night and eats it the next time on Wednesday evening every week of his life. And if you see what has happened to him, it can only be energy. One time, he, you, you were in the meeting, he bought a failed share in a bank. Failed. The bank was failing. He began to run, looking for somebody that buy the share. One naira per share, he couldn't find. One naira per share, he couldn't find. As he was looking around, he couldn't find. Then they had a board meeting. His board began to wipe him for making classic mistake. At the point, he said something rose up in him. He told them, stop. I love you, Shiki White. This share, the least I will sell it is five naira per share. I don't know if you understand. You want to sell one naira. Nobody bought. Then you say, I will sell minimum five naira per share. He coincided with when he was taking his 40 days fast. He brought it before God. Halfway into it, he got a call. One MD of a bank calls and says, Mr. Cosmos, I hear you have so and so shares. How much do you want to sell it? He says, five naira per share. Ah, he said, I heard you wanted to sell one naira. I said, I don't know who told you. <laughs> but me, that is the owner, have told you how much I want to sell it. So the guy, the guy was asking, as I, the guy dropped the phone. This was in the morning, 2 p.m. Another manager calls. I said, Mr. Doc, Mr. Cosmos, we heard you have a share to sell from this bank. How much do you want to sell? Say six naira per share. <laughs> the man said, I told I heard you said five naira now <laughs> to somebody. That's why I called. He told him, I don't know who told you. 
But I'm telling you how much I will sell. Ah. So the guy said, okay, tomorrow evening I'll come with my team. Let's, let's, let's settle. So they came. They were haggling. The man was still insisting on the five. He was saying six. Just six. Let's keep it at six. The man had agreed at five. So even one of the board members who was there called him out and said, no, stop arguing. Accept this thing. <laughs> he told the guy, keep quiet and watch a miracle. Watch a miracle. As they were haggling on five, six, five, six, that first guy who called in the morning now calls. And he puts the phone on speaker. So everybody in the house can hear. Uh -huh. I, I, I'll call with my people tomorrow so that we can tie this day. Uh, he says, at, at how much? He said, you say five now. No, it has gone up. It's the seven now. <laughs> oh, this energy. Sakabala. It's seven naira per share. He said, right now, he calls this man's name. This man is in my house now to tie it at six, but have refused. The man now spoke on this um, phone and said, what if I give you eight? Will you refuse? <laughs> he said, I will call you back and off the phone. So when this guy heard it, I said, okay, let's close it. I said, is something wrong with us? <laughs> he says, MD, MD, let me ask you. If you sent a marketer to business and you heard that this story happened the way you want to act it, what will you do to the person? <laughs> So the guy kept arguing, but I've been here now. We have agreed. You have told me and all that. You know what he, what he told the guy? For integrity purpose, I'm not going to sell it to you. I'm going to sell it to him and give you the differential. Wow. Yes, I'll sign you a check. The differential is going to cost 250 million naira. Wow. Wow. I'll give you 250 for integrity purpose, but it will not be good business for me and you that we sold this deal at eight and we sold it at six. Wow. Don't you think so? <laughs> The guy said, I'll buy for the eight. <laughs> he sold it to him at eight. Six months after, his share fell back to 70 comma per share. I don't even understand. He was, in the, he was in the meeting. Because I saw you in front of the meeting when I was watching the video. <laughs> This energy, it brings you to a place. Oh, Lakaba. You know, he, his word is bond in banks. So a politician mm, meander him and he asked them to give the guy money. When it was time, the guy, a politician became a politician, began to even behave like this. Say, for integrity's sake, I paid the money. It staggered us a little, but we stood. Because where it came from, it never dries. You see this energy? That's what you spend. In this world, that's what you spend. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of the righteous, it makes tremendous power. Oh, le konabaya. It makes it available. Ogamren was reminding me of you know, I've watched those clips on prayers from this man. See, they used to pray in London. They would lock themselves praying. Angel, they will stay praying. The only way they know that the prayer is enough is that the door will open of its own accord. If it doesn't, they don't stop. See, they saw creative miracles that if they tell you, you say it's a lie. By praying. When a man enters into this realm of prayer, it will look like God is in his company. I listened to Dukoya's story. He knelt down praying for people, was interceding while he was there. This about eight people in different locations saw him come to minister to them directly. I don't know if you understand. He's on one spot kneeling down and praying for people. Some, his spirit left in eight different directions bringing life and creative. One of them was at the last verge of cancer. Everything dried up. The energy you make available is what you transact with. That's why it looks like 
people whose theologies are confused seem to have results because this energy has no language if you go to buy a car they don't ask you do you speak fluent english or is your diction correct they don't one of the loudest ministries in this country is mfm they don't even know what to do with the money that's why they have a football team That's just a joke before you tell him. <laughs> oh, make this energy available. Make it available. You'll be glad you did. Those threshold, if you cross it, where your flesh ceases to struggle, your flesh will fight you. Your mind will fight you. But when you cross those threshold, it will look like God is just what he says he is to you. When Paul, Peter was prayed for, we saw drama. Chains fell off. Doors opened. Things began to happen of their own accord. But the other man died as if there was no God. Is this energy? All the ministries. There's a book I read. Power Bank. Prayer Bank, sorry. It's Prayer Bank. And this guy went to Yonggi Cho and asked Yonggi Cho, he was pastoring a 3,000 church when Young Cho was pastoring a 300,000 church. So he was, <laughs> he was very bold to tell Young Cho that I speak more fluent English than you. My theology is finer. He went to university in the U.S. Are you following? <laughs> and I've listened to you preach. I don't know. Please tell me what is the secret. So Young Cho asked him, how is your prayer life? <laughs> See, my prayer life is vibrant. How much do you pray? How long do you pray? So I pray powerful 30 minutes every day powerful powerful 30 minutes every day <laughs> see young Joe asked him again that prayer bank is a very interesting book it, 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 is, it is 30 minutes he even said how that 30 minutes he can <laughs> young Joe says I'm getting older I don't have time but if I don't pray I pray 3 hours every day so the man didn't get it he now finally told the man you see, the reason why my church is a tithe of your child. <laughs> and your tithe. <laughs> uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Like willing captive, they come. You don't know why they come. In training lead, my leaders, I did something to them. When we started, I started all kinds of prayer. All kinds of prayer. We have, I have four different prayer groups. That's apart from people who pray on the ground every time we have service. So, but one day I stopped every prayer because when we're praying like this, they know when you say first timers, you we have come for first time, I will see 27 person, 15 person every first time as we're praying. So one day I told everybody, every prayer department should stop praying. Everybody, no prayer. Even the prayer online, I stopped it. Because I'm training them for something. I stopped. It was a matter of time. I asked for first timer. I saw one person standing. One. One person. One interesting person, like <laughs> so I told my leaders, so I called for a meeting immediately. I said, I wanted to point out something to you. The loss of the universe is dependable and reliable. If you don't get to that place where you can actually tell that you can depend on this thing. So that week I now told them we had an emergency, we got an Airbnb. Um multiple apartments where in somewhere in Asokoro we locked ourselves up they, we stayed there from Thursday till Sunday just praying and teaching, praying and teaching then I made them to begin to call people to come then by Sunday we came back, we asked for first timers the whole place filled up again I said it's predictable it's the wind that causes people to come it's this energy So when we're praying those protracted time, it's not because it takes that amount of time for God to hear us. Some people just be asking, why do you pray like this? I'm making currencies available. And I mean serious currencies available. And when you have those energy, like Ibafia was telling us, if this energy is available, you say this energy you have, you have created, let me use it for you. You see something today. <laughs> Sir, so I saw money, eh? Even me, I was afraid. That's why right. when he says he's in there, I said, don't come, sir. 
He left my, my, from my church you know, with less than 15 million. Nothing less than 15 million. Somebody even gave me $10,000 to give him. Money was the easiest thing that came. He said, you have this energy? <laughs> you don't, you don't, don't be. I go father you. <laughs> I go father you. <laughs> I'll teach you something. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Make this energy available. Today I pray for you. Let that which makes prayer easy rest on you. Such as I have given I unto you. Every weight of darkness be lifted. God told me that today long standing cases will be dissolved. Let the breath of God come upon you. Let the power of the most high overshadow you. Now in the name of Jesus. Let every struggle in prayer end today. Everything that makes for procrastination be broken now. Be broken now. Let the hand of the Lord rest upon you. Let the ministerial angel of this grace go before you and help you. My Father, help, 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 help. Receive help in the name of Jesus. I command struggles to cease. By this anointing, let the yoke of the oppressor be broken. And like I was told, every long standing case is dissolved. Dissolve in the name of Jesus. Receive the answer of peace. As a midwife, I've come to help you bring forth. Push in the name of Jesus. Let the Almighty help you. Find peace at every turn. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir.